Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is sending Office 365 email from Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. Now in case you caught last week's episode where I talked about Traeger Grails and my pursuit to find one on Costco.ca, I was able to go ahead and get a grill. So I will do an update on that in the next coming weeks, but for, there seem to be a lot of interest around Traegers and for, for good reason. But uh, if you were curious about that, yeah, look for more content coming up here shortly. But in terms of today, let's talk about Office 365 email and being able to send that from Power Automate desktop. So naturally we do have connectors inside of Cloudflows. And these connectors are generally quite good and have a lot of different capabilities such as replying to an email, sending an email with options, support for shared mailboxes, etc. And today though we wanted to focus more on Power Automate Desktop. There could be some scenarios where you do need to send email from within Power Automate Desktop and the authentication slash connection experience is quite different between Power Automate Desktop and Cloudflows itself. So for example, we need to provide an SMTP server and port settings. So generally the question will be, well, what are those? Like in what values do I need to even put in? Because certainly the, the defaults won't work from that perspective. In addition, what are some of the other differences? We'll go ahead and explore that as well as part of this specific video. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. All right, so let's go ahead, let's jump right into a demo. It's not overly complex, but uh, let's go through it now. Okay, so I am in pad. Power Automate Desktop, and what I can do is I can just type in email in my actions here and see what are the different actions that are available to us. So the ability to retrieve email from an IMAP server, the ability to move, delete, or mark as unread an email message, and then certainly the ability to send email. So for today, we're gonna to focus on this specific action. If we can go ahead and drag that over into our canvas here, and when we do so, we're going to see the various options that exist. So we can specify who the email is from. And naturally, some of these settings are going to be more applicable when maybe you don't have Office 365 because Office 365 is going to impose some security constraints, which is a good thing. And we'll talk a little bit about those in the section below. But here we can go ahead and indicate the sender display name, who we want to send the email to, we want to CC, BCC anybody, provide a subject, and then we also have the ability to use or to provide a body. Now, what is interesting here is we can flip this on to say body is HTML, and that's when naturally we can go ahead and to create a richer experience from that perspective and uh, you know just have a, some nice, nicer formatting. The other thing to note is we do have all of these uh, basically the squarely uh, curly bra braces plus an X, what this means is we can also use parameters, right? So if we did have input parameters defined here or even variables that are set as part of our overall process, naturally we can go ahead and use those as well if we wish. Same thing with attachments, we could go ahead and do that dynamically or we could go ahead and have a static path as well. So those are some options that we can take advantage of. Now, in terms of SMTP server, this is probably the most important bit of the video itself because this isn't gonna be pre-populated for you. And when you use Cloudflows and you go ahead and authenticate and create a connection, you're not asked for this information. It's just implied as part of the overall connection that you're establishing. 
But here are the values that do work. So smtp.office365.com and then also the server port. So the default value is 25. That is typically a default port. However, we're gonna go ahead and use 587 as we've got a secure channel. Now, we also want to ensure that we go ahead and enable SSL, and we also indicate that the SMTP server needs authentication. Office 365 is not gonna let you create a spam engine. And so as a result, all of the emails that go through need to go ahead and send out a, uh, basically do it in an authenticated manner. And that's what we're gonna do. So here's what we would have to provide. We need to log in naturally. So we provide our username, which is essentially our, our email address or, or our UPN, and then a password. Once again, since this is a password, we can go ahead and use sensitive inputs. Um, if we needed to pass these values in from Cloudflow, perhaps we go ahead and retrieve them from Key Vault. I've talked about Key Vault and sensitive text in a previous video. I'll include that as part of my description. Now here, accept untrusted certs, that is disabled. You know, and for good reason, I would say maybe if you still have an on-prem server and you need to go ahead and send email out and perhaps you've got a dev instance where you've got like self-signed certs, which you know I'm generally not a fan of, um, you could enable that and basically swallow that untrusted cert, but in general, you wouldn't want to use this uh, unless maybe you were doing some level of a POC or something like that. So that's how you go ahead and configure the action itself. Uh, we can go ahead and just run this and we will go ahead and see what the results are. So it has now completed running and pretty much right away, here is the email that I have received. And so do note that uh, it does respect the senders, right? Like this was the display name of the sender. In this case, it's uh, an account that I use called Lydia H. Um, so it is respecting that as well. So not overly sort of complex, but just to, to, to give you a sense of how you would configure, especially the SMTP uh, settings that uh, is naturally gonna throw people for a loop uh, from that perspective. So hopefully that uh, answers some questions around how you go about sending email from Power Automate Desktop. All right, so thanks for checking out another video on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, please go ahead and do so at Weirzy is where you'll find me. In addition, you're obviously on YouTube, so thanks for checking out this video, but likes, subscribes, and comments are always welcome. Thanks again for checking out this content, and we'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.